Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more AFL 23 here today on the channel. We have Season 2, Episode 11 of my Brisbane Lions Coach Career Series. And here today, we have the final match of the season against the Essendon Bombers. Now, this will decide if we make the top 8, I think. If we can beat them here today, we will obviously make the top eight. However, if we lose, there's a real chance that we could finish somewhere between ninth or tenth, also depending upon other results. But what a comeback it would be if we were to do it. We sit in fifth, the Bombers just behind. We're going to go and face them at Marvel Stadium. It is uh, going to be a big match here today. Let's get stuck into the Bombers. Now, obviously, we won against them earlier in the season with a goal after the siren. It was super, super close. I am not so hoping for a uh, similar match <laughs> to be as close. We need to beat them here today. Let's get stuck into Essendon and hopefully get the right result. As Lester gets dropped and gets, gets pinged for holding the ball. Oh, no. It gets spoiled. Oh, good pressure. It gets hit to the top of the goal square. And the Bombers have an opportunity to put themselves in front. Essendon, you wouldn't imagine are going to not miss this one. Yep. Straight through the goals. And it goes back to the midfield. We go again. Will Essendon put our season to bed as Berry dodges the tackle fires it to the right of the goal square it gets spilt and somehow Essendon hold on it's a sloppy handball King just tries to make some space and somehow Jack Gunston puts his name on the score sheet and we're still not down and out for the count just yet in this one the roof is closed at Marvel Stadium. Thankfully, because it can be quite wet and windy down in Docklands. There's no seagulls anywhere. But the Bombers take a mark in their forward 50. And they have the opportunity to score another. Number 25. And of course they do. The Bombers hit the lead. McInerney back in the ruck. The Bombers win the midfield duel. They hit it again. Trying to go forward. This time it gets spoiled slightly. They turn, chipping it in. Coleman can't dodge the mark. And not going to lie, in this first quarter, the Bombers. Essendon seems to be the superior opposition. And they kick for goal. Three goals and another textbook finish by the Bombers. Lions need to show some resilience here. And the Bombers go forward again. Our defense simply does not look up to par. They somehow get a point there. But now, the Lions have to give it and go and get it out. And uh, I, I don't know what to say. At quarter time, um, they get another. So we're three goals down. Bailey can't get to it. Gets dropped ultimately in the end. And 
Lions desperately need a goal here. And somehow, McCluggage, I think he hit it out on the full, ultimately. Running out of time in this match. Need goals. And need them aplenty. A lot of pressure in our forward 50. But it looks like... The Bombers somehow miraculously hold on to the Lions attack. Coleman goes up. Great spoil. It's a favorable drop only as far as Ainsworth. And this seems to be such a, such a uh, tough match of footy, eh? Simpkin wins it. Getting a little bit of space. Dodgy handball. But he somehow gets the ball. I don't know how it didn't get called for an incorrect disposal. I feel like I get caught for that more than what the AI should. And now we've got a ball up. McInerney wins it to McCluggage. Decent handball. Simkin now has some space. He smacks it to the top of the goal square. And Jack Gunston gets the grab this time. He plays on quickly because he knows there's not much time. But it's a great goal there. Back in the midfield, it's a two-goal game. Essendon 4-1-25, the Lions 2-zip. And it's a spilt mark, only as far as Rayner, who couldn't get it out. And it's going to be a ball up in our forward 50. Golden opportunity here for the Lions. Neil gets dropped a di again. Um, the Essendon midfield and tackling capability... Is super strong in this match. Uh, Dunkley manages to get one back. So it's a little bit ugly. The forward attack and, and wave of the Lions. But we have brought it back somehow within a one goal game. Essendon go forward. Oh, Gardner with the big fist. Bang. Couple good handballs. As McInerney has the footy. He has an opportunity now. Hits it from the 50, sails it through for a point. <laughs> Still a goal game. Points all leveled up. The Bombers trying to bring it out from the back. Chipping it around sillily and uh, I don't know. They just gifted a king a goal there. Not 15 play on. And the man from Gold Coast, the former son. I think he's from Melbourne, but he came from Gold Coast to us. That is, Gardner goes up again, gets spilt, and unfortunately for the Lions, the Bombers react incredibly quickly and get another goal. Nullifying our goal that we just worked so hard for. McCluggage to Danaher. He's going to play on quick. And I've actually found, I think they're going to patch it at some point. But uh, it hasn't happened at the time of recording. They're going to patch that um, run on. Sometimes it's not as accurate when you sort of play on and get into the... I think it's, if, it's, if you're out or just in and around that like 48, 50 mark, you like don't score nine times out of ten. But if you're in within about 35, 40 meters, you usually tend to ping it better, better than a set shot. I don't know about it. Should they patch it? They probably already have. Um, by the time this video comes out, but... You never know. Uh, the Bombers get another one back, though. So it looks like it's going to be a, another high-scoring fixture, regardless of this one. And it's going to be interesting to see. There's a couple options this game can go and and where we end up at halftime. But I, I think regardless of where we go, I think our comeback this season from being a predicted 20th to 18th after winning the flag last year, it's a good comeback. But hey... We want to try and get finals. That's what our club is largely um, set up for. I don't think there's been too much of a drastic change. I still think we're probably running at an attrition rate, though. Um, I don't particularly want to go out and sign a bunch of new players just to keep the career series at least realistic and sensible. But hey, I don't, I don't know. But like before even I took the job as the Brisbane coach, Brisbane went out and signed Josh Dunkley and Jack Gunston. Now, if you were doing a career series and you did that before uh, last year, you'd probably be like, oh, that's so unrealistic. <laughs> it probably wouldn't happen because like the Lions like don't really go out and do like high 
uh, contact signings like that. I I'm surprised Josh Dunkley left, to be honest. Um, but maybe he just wanted to, uh, to change things up. To be fair, I... I I, I am blown away why Adam Trelaw signed for the Dogs, to be honest. And he came out with the statement that the Dogs are going to win a... Tr like, there's... I think that it is incredibly favourable to look back on that dog season where they won the Premiership. They were, like, not even a top-eight team that season. They didn't play that good 40 at all. They played well in finals. But, like, they... I, I think that is such a wild decision. Like, I think they were so lucky to win that. Obviously... There's always a bit of luck. They played well in the final, but I, I don't know. I, I was not. I never thought watching that, thinking, "Oh yeah, they're going to create a dynasty here. They're going to go win at least two, three flags in about five years." Um, I never thought that looking at that list. But hey, they went on and won it. But yeah, to to leave Collingwood to to join the Dogs to think, "Hey, I'm probably going to win a flag with them." I think that's nuts. But um. Anyway, things are tied up here. That's my rant about Adam Trelaw <laughs> leaving to join the Bulldogs. Um, I don't, I don't think they're going to win a flag within the next t two, three years either. Um, I think they're in a mega rebuilding phase. As Stringer there, ironically, a former Bulldog. I actually don't mind Stringer. <laughs> like, you, I think he's sort of he plays that Dustin Martin role. I think you sign. The thing is, what you do is right. You build a team. And then you add someone like Stringer. Like him in finals, and just like when you need that dynamic dynamo player, like you slot him in. You don't like, if you're building a team, you don't put him in first. You put him in last because he just adds that. He's that cherry on the top that just has so much quality and, and intelligence. He just like, yeah. I, I, I don't think he's as good as Dustin Martin, but I, I do think he's sort of that dynamic dynamo player that brings a lot of spark. Anyway, back to this match. 43-43, 7-1, 1 Super tight here. McInerney and the Lions have an opportunity to go in front. King could get it. He can't. He gets spilled only as far as Gunston. He handballs it to Bailey. And we are still slowly but surely keeping this finals campaign alive. We go again. Would love another. Simpkin. Hits it. And we couldn't get the mark. And it's probably going to go the siren. Unless Essendon didn't get another one back here to tie things up. They handball it. And they run out of time. Which uh, I think is kind of crazy that the AI made the decision to handball it then. Not even go for the attempt. I don't know who was kicking it. Bombers let me know. Bombers supporters. But here we go. 7-1, 8-1. Lions by a goal going into this fourth term to decide our season. Who's going to win? What's going to happen? If we do lose, if we do draw, do we still make the top eight? Who knows? As Essendon get it in. <laughs> Sicily with the interception somehow. Handballs it dangerously. McCluggage goes to the wing. And I'm actually going to wind things down and slow things down and play a little bit kick-to-kick -kick here, which I don't tend to do because we need to win this one. I quite often am, am chasing leads and want to play high-octane energetic football, but I need to make sure my forward entries count now that we have the lead. And Ben King is going to get this one. He's going to play on because he's accurate from there as it is still broken to shoot from the 45 and play on. I think they actually increased it since earlier versions because I don't... I think I, tr I did attempt that, but I, think, I feel like there was a... At some point... The amount of times that patches come out, because they patch it so often, so many times that patches break the game, it's hard to keep track on what's what. There's been so many different versions of this game. But at the moment, the Lions lead. Essendon winning the midfield duel. Simpkin gets it out. And the Lions to go three goals in front. Lockie, Neil, goes for goal. And no one can catch him. The captain, El Capitan, in Spanish as it were. He scores the third for the Lions, and it's a three-goal game here down at Marvel. We won by six points after the siren, thanks to Joe Danaher scoring and facing his former side. Will it go around again? Somehow Essendon get the ball out. Ainsworth and Gardner are there. A completely mistimed punch, and it's going to be a chip. Rich goes up. He somehow wins it, and it's going to be a boundary throw-in. Essendon still hunting for those goals. 
Three goal game. McInerney wins it. Gets chopped down. For some reason called an incorrect disposal. Which I think is incredibly harsh. We've been pinged on them so much. And I feel like I get... Um, I don't get any of them from the AI. So Essendon, a little bit unfairly here, gifted a goal. And now it's only a two-goal game. The Lions lead 61-49 with a minute to spare. Plenty of time for both sides to get a goal. Neil handballs it. Couple good handballs. Rayner gets chopped but somehow releases the footy. And it's a point. Desperately needed a goal there. Was that... The winner there. Did we throw? Essendon trying to bring it out from the back. They chip it. It somehow falls to a lion, but they recover. And Danaher wins it and kicks a goal. With three goal lead with 42 seconds, I I think we're in a good spot now. Thankfully. But the AI could score more. Essendon go up. They win the contest. And Simkin goes to ground. If we can get to the 30th... Second mark, we might be okay. Probably takes like 10, 15 seconds for the AI to score. They chip it back. Ainsworth goes up. Good spoil. Unfortunately, there's bombers there just flooding. And unfortunately, Gardner mistimes the mark. The bombers are going to go back and kick this one. But they're winding down the clock. They need to kick it quick. They do get the goal. They're not going to rush it. And it's a two-goal game here with 14 seconds remaining. Unless Essendon get another one quick, I think it is mathematically impossible now for them to get the win. Especially when us going forward. Cameron, bouncing ball. Simkin, it's a weird handball back. And Dunkley is probably just going to get pinged for holding the ball. They entry now. And I think the Lions are going to win this one. Well deservedly. You probably could have said that Essendon probably should have had at least one more goal. But uh, the Lions beat the Bombers here 68-55. And facing the Bombers this season has been some of the best matches I've played in this game. What do you reckon about those results? Absolutely insane. And uh, Stringer scored three. Guelphie with two. Merritt... And Neil up there with the disposals. And we finish in fifth, ultimately. And that is where the season is going to wrap up. As we have made finals, guys. <laughs> I'm so happy. Because honestly, if we were playing on the earlier, later patch at the start of this season, we probably would have finished 16th, 17th, and 18th. So, uh, we've had some adversity. But Richmond are going to win the minor premiership, which is Pretty big for them. Um, Melbourne finished in second. Port third. Saints fourth. Giants in sixth. The Bombers, even though they lost, they still finished in seventh. The Crows in eighth. Unfortunately, Collingwood miss out on goal difference, along with the Suns and the Hawks. Carlton, surprisingly, finishing in 17th. And uh, West Coast in 16th. Well, unfortunately, on that note, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for Season 2, Episode 12, coming out the exact same time tomorrow, where we're going to have our finals campaign. And uh, I guess I'm going to leave it as a surprise who we're going to be against. You can mathematically work it out, because you know picks who plays who, but I'm not going to tell you. So <laughs> stay tuned for that, and hopefully we can have a strong and successful finals campaign. Unfortunately, we're not in the top four, so it's make or break. Um that match so we need to win it there's no second chance like and subscribe if you haven't already if you're still enjoying the series if you want to see more from me check out the videos on screen thank you so much for watching my name is ben simsey and i will see you in the next one cheers